Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2018 Chrysler 300S. Now the 300S is the sportier of the 300 lineup while maintaining the luxurious aspects of the 300 series. So let's go ahead and check it out. This 300 is sitting on 245, 45 ZR Goodyear Eagle F1 tires wrapped around 20 inch hyper black alloy wheels. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is bright white clear coat and it's the perfect color to show off the all the black trimmings that the sport trim level has. So let's go ahead and start here in the front. So you'll notice the center portion of the grill has the gloss black portion with the floating Chrysler badge in chrome. And then you have the smoked chrome around the outside, kind of finish off the, the whole look. You see the smoke chrome right around in this area. You also have some more smoked chrome here at the bottom, running right in here. And then it goes all the way across. And then right below it is a matte sheen black. This is surrounding the uh, LED fog lights here at the bottom. There's two of them and a little projector housing. Or a lens, I should say, like a little projector lens. So the headlights are surrounded by a black bezel as well. So you can see, instead of having the all chrome, you know, blaring out in the vehicle as just the, the uh, combination of gloss and matte blacks right here in the bezel. And then that way the headlight kind of stands out a little bit more with the chrome around the outside and the LED accents as your daytime running lights. So the headlights are powered by halogen bulbs in a projector tube for your low and your high beams. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key or smart key, some people call it. And it's designed to where you could just keep this key fob in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. Uh, it does have some useful buttons though if you wanna use those, lock and unlock, the ability to open up the trunk and a remote start and a panic button. He also has a physical key here on the inside. So let's go ahead and remote start it. We'll go ahead and double tap it. It locks the doors, starts up. Now you notice it beeped twice. That feature can be turned on or off. Um, it will flash the lights. You can have that feature turned on or off. Turn it off, let's go ahead and push it one time and it'll turn right off. Now the panic button is down here. We could just push and hold that and we can get the panic button going on. So it's basically just going to beat the horn, flash the lights, but it has a really strong horn, doesn't it? Okay, so let's look at the profile. Okay, so you'll notice it has all white exterior color, but then, like I mentioned, the reason why it's nice to have it white is because you can see around the outside, right in here, of the uh, glass is all gloss black. So it really has a good, nice contrast. And then these, this pillar right here in the center portion is uh, gloss black as well, just kind of giving it like a one solid piece look, especially when you tint the windows. Looks awesome with on a white vehicle like this with all the other black. As long as you have the key with you, it can be in a bag and be, be in your pocket, whatever. As long as it's with a, within a close proximity of the outside of this door, uh, you can lock or unlock the doors simply by lock the doors by pushing this button to unlock it. As long as the key's here next to this door on the outside, you put your hand right here and it senses the key, it senses your hand position and unlocks the doors. Now there's a setting to where you can make it unlock all the doors or just one door, but uh, right now it at least lets you have access to the vehicle. So the 300 is on the same platform as the Dodge Charger. And both of these vehicles have the front doors swing out really, really wide. So you have this really open space to get in and out. Um, the door just simply gets out of your way. And I think that's fantastic. I really like when a door is able to swing out this far. So you'll notice it's, it's nowhere near like a 90 degree angle, but it's pretty far out there. Okay, so looking at the inside of this door, a lot of soft touch features. 
So up in here, this is the same material that's found on the dashboard. It's like a uh, like a soft nerf, I guess like a nerf material is what I call it, but it's a really soft and durable as can be uh, synthetic material with a simulated kind of leather texturing there. Just below that is a black accent in chrome and a metallic accent matching the handle here. And that material continues down all the way to this cloth. So there's cloth right in here, all around your arm. It goes all the way around this area. And then below that, this is like a, probably a synthetic leather material with the contrast stitching here. So it's very soft and comfortable. And you have a nice big handle that's pretty much perfectly uh, located for me anyway. Little storage pocket right in here. And then your con door controls and a large storage pocket with a water bottle holder or a bottle holder. This one has the premium Alpine system, so you can see the little badging right in here. I don't know if you can read that. Okay, so here's your threshold with a just a durable plastic uh, seal plate. But right in here, okay, so these passenger seat and driver seat, both of them, have are powered, but some, some passenger seats on some vehicles have the ability to go forward and back, right? Uh, but this one actually, you can go up and down. So you can go up and down, you can also tilt the front up and down, and you can position, tilt the entire seat up and down. So there's a lot of features on this particular um, passenger seat that you just don't find on some other vehicles. And then you have the full way lumbar adjustment. That's another thing, uh, some seats will have a just an in and out lumbar adjustment. This is go up and down, in and out. So that way uh, your the lumbar position can go up and down as well as in and out to get that perfect spot. Cause everybody's body's different. Everybody's back could be more comfortable if you kind of fine tune it. So this is fantastic. So it's on the driver and the passenger. So passenger is privileged as well. T typically it's, these are privileges that the, only the driver has. But check out these uh, leather seats with the contrast stitching here. And then the stitching here in the center portion, looking nice and sporty and awesome. Then you have the embroidered S here in the back of the seat. Very comfortable, especially considering you can fine tune it so much. And the amount of leg room is amazing. I mean, you could put the legs, the, the seat so far back that, I mean, it's just like a NBA player can fit in here. Okay, so the dashboard is that same material, Nerf material I was talking about, all the way down to here separated with the black and metallic accent just like the door um, it has a lockable glove compartment but it's not a regular glove compartment it's felt lined and it has this portion at the bottom that's kind of more standard but it also has these little shelves up here so that way this is something you'll see in the charger and also the challenger so that way you can kind of organize your glove compartment a little bit better Okay, looking at the back door, inside of the back door, uh, same soft touch surfaces up here, here, cloth down here, and then the leather arm uh, rest with the uh, contrast stitching. Basically a shortened version of the front door, but you notice this door swings out quite well as well, making it easier to get in the back. So here's the back seat, leather trimmed and contrast, contrast stitched. Uh, bench seat now it does have some little bolsters here to kind of simulate a bucket seat But it's basically a bench seat so that way you can utilize the center portion for a center passenger if you want Now it does have a significant hump here in the center portion So the center passenger would have to deal with that but the rest of the portions Wide open space here even with the front seat all the way back You still have a significant amount of leg room and you have these storage pockets in the back of the front seats on both of them it has the latch system for car seats. So right in here is your vents for your climate control. You also have two USB chargers. So the chargers uh, don't interface with the radio, but they do just USB uh, ability to plug in a USB device and charge it, which is what the rear passengers like to do is play around with their phones and devices and they can keep them charged, especially on a long trip. So right in here is an armrest, storage space, cup holders that are illuminated, I think. Pretty sure those are illuminated cup holders. 
See that little ridge around the outside? And these seats fold down uh, just in case you need to add to the cargo space. And there's a little latch right in here, a little pull tab, and you can fold it right down. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, at the very top, it has a little shark fin antenna and your third brake light right in here. Now right in there as well is your backup camera hidden on this side and your ability to open up the trunk, which we'll do that in just a minute. You have the floating uh, emblem Chrysler badging here in the back. All LED tail lights, everything in the tail lights are LED. Nice and bright and crisp. One good thing about the LED tail lights or LED lights in, in general over another light, especially on a turn signal, is they're on and off. They're no fading and on and off. It's it's either on or off, and there's no, you know, gradual fade on and off. Okay, so it has dual exhaust tips with true dual exhaust as well, which you probably noticed in the beginning of the video. Dual pipes, not just the tips here in the back. Okay, so we can use the key to open up this trunk or we can use this button. So either way, when you push the key, uh, the button on the key or when you push this button, you just push it and it goes up for you. So it's kind of spring loaded. It lifts itself up. It also goes up quite a bit over the glass. So that way you don't bump your head or you know, reduces the chance of that. Here's the inside of the, of the trunk has a little handle right here for closing it. Okay, so here's the cargo space, your trunk space. Has little hangers right there. You can hang bags or secure things, tie downs. You can also put a net pocket in here. Two light sources. See, there's one there and one there. So that way at nighttime you have, you know, better lighting than just a single one. You notice everything's covered up. There's no wires. There's actually speakers under here and there's no wires hanging down or speakers exposed. They just cover everything up. Uh, so that way, not only does it help with your luggage or whatever you're putting back here from getting scratched. Let's say you put a, something here and you push it in there and it touches like metal back up in this area uh, or, you know, maybe disconnects a speaker wire or something. They go ahead and just cover all that up. And, uh, you know, it also helps with sound as well. So your back seats, are a 60 40 split so you can see the split right here this allows you to fold down one seat or the other to add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space now you can fold both of them down and have a wide open space to add and give you as much cargo space as possible back here okay so this right here lifts up this little tab you kind of lift it up like so and it actually has on the other side of the tab this little hanger that snaps in place we go ahead and lift that up hang it right there that way it holds it up for you there's a little funnel right there we'll, we'll explain what that's for later uh, there's your battery your battery is in the trunk here keeps it away from the heat of the engine and also kind of helps with weight distribution as well and there's your car your spare tire and i guess you can use a little bit of the space around it and possibly for cargo space the fuel door is locking and it's here on the driver's side. Open it up and check it out. There's no cap. It does have this little rubber portion right here to kind of seal it up, but uh, there's actually a two stage portion right here. So when you put the nozzle in, it has to go through, it has to be long enough and the right size to fit in there, but it has to pass through two little doorways. So that way, you know, it's not easy for debris to get in there, but it's generally covered up anyway. But the whole purpose of this capless design, one of the purposes is um, when checked it with, some people will have a problem with their cast cap not on correctly or not on tight enough in the in the past and the check engine light would turn on. It was a you know common thing that that's one of the first things you check. Um, but this eliminates that problem and also just makes it easier. You don't have to get your hands dirty. You just, you know, open the, the door, pump the gas, and you don't have to fumble with a cap or forget to put it on or lose it or whatever. Now the funnel I mentioned in the back and the trunk, you have to use the funnel if you need to uh, use a gas can only. If you're using a gas can, 
to put gas in the vehicle, you use that funnel. That has the correct size and the correct length to put the gas in the gas tank and not in the, uh, the spillover valve there. Okay, to start it up, as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, bag, whatever, just as long as it's inside the vehicle, put your foot on the brake and push this button right here to start it up. Okay, so here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You notice the floor mat hooks in place in two places, keeping it straight and uh, out of the way. And there's your accelerator and brake pedal, foot actuated parking brake right here, and then just behind it is a foot rest. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a little latch, a little bit to the right of center, right in this area. Just reach in, down, move it to the left, and lift up. Doesn't take much energy, and it goes the rest of the way up by itself. Just right in here, you just reach in, move it to the left. Okay, so it has an insulated hood. It also has this little portion right here, seal in the front, helping with the airflow of the vehicle. You also have the seal around the back portion, right back in here. Right there, it's like a rubber seal. Helping with the airflow as well as noise. Now the strut towers are right here and they're kind of braced here in the back all the way across. So you see the braces right here, kind of extends all the way across, kind of supporting the front of the vehicle. Okay, so under this plastic cover is an engine. It's a 3.6 liter uh, Pentastar v, uh, V6 VVT, variable valve timing. So it has that helping out with the, you know, the power and the fuel economy. Depending on your needs, it's variable. With the, the, timing, the timing is variable. Now I'll leave it, I'll link, it's hard to explain. I'll link, leave a link in the description explaining how that system works. Uh, similar to like the old Honda VTEC system. It's a little bit different than that though, but it, you know, it really helps out with the fuel economy while still maintaining, you know, all the horsepower and torque and everything that this thing's capable of. And it's paired to a eight speed automatic transmission, which is the ZF eight speed transmission that is just fantastic. It's the AHP ZF transmission. You can look it up. It's used in a lot of vehicles and it's runs out nice. Also want to mention your oil filter is right there. So changing the oil isn't that hard considering you can get to the oil filter right here on the top front of the engine. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, we already saw a little button down here for your fuel door release. But right in here has the door lock controls, power windows, and then your side mirror adjustments. Now the power windows are automatic, one touch down and one touch up. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there because this has the acoustic glass. It has two panes of glass uh, with an acoustic material there on the inside. So it has a glass on the outside, glass on the inside, and this, this lamination uh, actually keeps the, not only does it make a stronger door uh, you know, structure of the glass, but also it keeps the noise from transit, transferring the vibration from the outside glass to the inside glass. Same thing with the windshield. It actually has an acoustic windshield in this vehicle as well. All right, there's your threshold area and your power seat, just like the passenger side with the four-way lumbar adjustments up and down, dentist chair type uh, adjustments here. But check it out, Look, really, really like these seats. The contrast stitching really does it for me. That smooth leather uh, with the contrast stitching and then you have the, you know, the S right in there. Just looking in the vehicle, that's very impressive to me anyway with that, uh, that white contrast stitching with that white exterior vehicle and that combination of white and black, very, Something that I like anyway. Okay, so right in here, you have your headlight controls. So you have automatic, off, parking light, and there's your headlight. 
To turn on your fog lights, you just push here on the center portion. You have dimmer switches for your interior gauges, and if you go all the way to the top, it'll turn on your interior lights. And this is for your ambient lighting. So around your cup holders and your backlit buttons, you can uh, adjust the uh, brightness of the ambient light there. And then we, this button right here is the, uh, the trunk button to release the trunk. This has a tilt and telescoping steering column, and it has a ambidextrous uh, lever down here, right here in the center portion. So if your right or left hand can find it easy, you just drop it here at the bottom and adjust your steering wheel in or out, up and down. And it really extends out pretty far. Get it in position and you just lock it in place. Okay, so let's take a look in the inside from the driver's seat. This is where all the goodies are and very comfortable seats. I had the lumbar adjusted and everything adjusted here. The only thing I have different than my normal drive position, driving position is I have the seat too far back. Just to give you an idea, I'm six feet tall and I can actually put the seat so far back to where I could barely touch the pedals and it would just not be you know, practical to drive this way. So, you know, even if you're taller than six feet, you shouldn't have any problem with leg room in this vehicle. Um, same thing with the knee room, it seems to be fine, especially when I, you know, the adjustments on the seat is just fantastic. So even if you're short, you can pull the seat forward, but you can also lift it up, which is nice. Okay, so here's the steering wheel, and it's a leather wrap steering wheel, just like the seats with the white contrast stitching there on the in the in inside, looking pretty nice. Now this is just like the seats, a smooth uh, leather, so it doesn't have that traditional leather texturing, uh, so just really nice looking. Now. Just because it's a smooth leather doesn't mean it's slippery or anything. It does uh, grip it pretty good. You grip your, you can grip it, and it's not going to slip. And it's soft to the touch, a little bit. It kind of gives a little bit, and the thickness is really good, so it doesn't dig into your hands. So I have pretty have pretty good sized hands, and it still, you know, doesn't feel too small in my hands. So this is really nice. So you can see it has the gloss black accents around the buttons, little bolster grips here on the top. Okay, so here on the right side is your cruise control setting settings. So you can turn it on, set it with both your plus and your minus, either one. Uh, resume and cancel there. You have paddle shifters here on the back of the steering wheel, and they stay with the steering wheel. They're actually mounted right here. Uh, they're not mounted to the column. And the right there is your plus and your negative for going through your uh, gears. And just below that, just under here, is a little toggle switch with a center button. Now that is designed where you can put your hand right here while you're driving and your fingers line up with it perfectly. So on the right side is your volume for your radio. The center button is cycling through your audio source like AM, FM, satellite radio, or even your different media. You can change your, through your media, things like that, depending on how, what you have available. On the less, left side here on the back underneath the um, the paddle shifter, the little up and down with the center button. Up and down is to change through your audio tracks or your radio stations, and the center button is for cycling through your presets on your radio. Okay, so right in here, uh, these buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in a minute. Then you have your Bluetooth controls, uh, answer, hang up, and then you have your voice recognition. Now this vehicle has a pretty advanced voice recognition system that will change through the radio stations, adjust your climate control, all kinds of different things. It's really, really worth it to learn how to use the commands and get used to doing it because that way you can stay productive, you can do things as in a vehicle just by using your voice and you can stay focused on the road and have your hands on the wheel and everything. So really good feature. Convenience and a safety feature in my opinion. Your turn signal has your windshield wiper controls there. Okay, so let's look at the gauges. Check it out. It has that blue background looking sharp. And it has a, the dials are very impressive with that blue popping through there like little gemstones, I guess. And the RPMs are there on the left side. Speedometer is there on the right side. But right here in the center is a digital screen which gives you a ton of information. So you notice at the top left it has the and this is customizable, but right now it's showing the range. Top right has the outside temperature. And then you have a digital speedometer there in the center portion. At the bottom left, 
is your engine coolant temperature on the bottom right is your fuel gauge okay so right here in the center it has a sporty looking button uh, numbers too I think it looks pretty neat but using these buttons right here we can cycle through this and actually is a whole part of a whole menu system so scrolling that da uh, scrolling down you can see now at the very top you see it has it's part of a whole menu this is number one number two is your vehicle info and you notice these little bars showing you they have more information besides your tire pressure uh, you can go to your coolant temperature transmission temperature oil temperature oil pressure oil life battery voltage and it goes back to your tire pressure scrolling down uh, fuel economy so you have two different ones here which you can reset this one has the range this one has a current miles per gallon uh, there on the top right so that way you can keep it on what's going on in that very moment it's all estimated by the way and then you have your trip info which gives you your miles your miles per gallon during that time period and the actual time uh, in which you took to drive those miles scrolling down again is your audio just whatever your radio is doing and stored messages will show up here and your screen setup this is where you can change the things on the corners there so we can go in there and we can change the upper left upper right um, we can also change the center whatever whatever's whatever you want to put there uh, your fuel gauge you can move that and your odometer uh, you can adjust all these different things current gear you can you know choose what you want to see there scrolling down again will take you back to your digital speedometer that would be my default screen I think most people would have that all that information is just there in case you want to use it you don't have to go in there and look at it all the time it's just there if you want to okay center stack here at the very top is a analog clock and use this little button to set it you just push that and it goes through incre increments of minutes if you hold it down it'll go faster so that way you can adjust the hours but I like the way this one has like a blacked out some of them are like a chrome this is a smoked chrome um, clock which kind of blends in a little bit more to me really nice especially accented or on the outside with that gloss black and the uh, more matte or flat black here looking nice goes with the sport trim level okay so here's your Uconnect system uh, touch screen the 2018 models they just have a really 17 and 8 models they really imp in, in, improved is what I was trying to get out um, improve the clarity and the resolution of these screens so right now okay so you can see these little icons here at the bottom right now we're in this first icon these icons will stay at the bottom the whole time and we can make select selections uh, and we can see where we're at the whole time so right now first icon is your radio so you have AM FM satellite radio and then at the very top is your presets and you can adjust the audio fine-tune that so your left right front all that stuff you can also kind of grab that move it where you want it and you can always put it back in the center by pushing the C there and then you have the equalizer speed adjusted volume all right next icon is your media so you have Bluetooth auxiliary USB 1 and USB 2 so lots of different ways of playing music through the sound system and no in case you're wondering it does not have a CD player uh, climate so this is your next icon you can see you can adjust your driver and passenger temperatures where you want the air to blow your fan speed all your different settings including your front and rear defrosters all right here on the screen you also have physical buttons below which I'll show you in a minute apps so these are all the different apps that you can have and the icons for those apps so you can put those icons at the bottom if you want so right now it shows the controls down here but let's change that let's change that to uh, let's see here let's go to so the controls are like your heated heated seats and stuff like that let's actually take this one activate services let's say we just want to put that there push and hold it and move it down here so there we go so now it has that icon instead of the other one so now all we have to do is find the other one and put it back Let's press and hold it and we can put it down here for one we can also rearrange it here on the screen as well um, but these, these are the different icons that you can have and you can fine-tune it at the bottom that you want and the activate services while we mentioned that 
Uh, this is where you can go in and activate Uconnect services um, with satellite radio, of course. And then you have you can call, you can enter an email, and the reason why you'd want to activate is uh, it has health reports for your for your vehicle, and you have added security and just additional benefits here. I've never activated one of these for my personal use, but um, just kind of give you an idea what that is. You also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capabilities. Right now there's no phone plugged in. Um, those will illuminate and give you those options when, when the phone is actually plugged in. Okay, so let's go to the controls that we talked about before. Heated driver's seat has a high and low two stage. And your dimmer mirror, uh, you can turn that on and off. It's auto dim mirror, we can turn that off. We can also go into settings here and there's lots of different settings. This is where you can turn off the beeping on the remote start, uh, that kind of stuff. All right, phone. So once you pair a phone, we're not gonna do that now, but once you pair one, you'll have access to your favorites, recent calls, your contacts, even a keypad to make calls um, using a little dial pad here. You could pair, I think it's up to six phones and you'll have a priority system. You can always also transfer it like if you're in a call it'll give you the option to transfer it back to your cell phone in case you want to have a private call because it will play through the speakers and your settings here we already saw that but the icon is down here as well of course you can change these if you want all right let's put it back on the radio okay so down here uh, you have a traditional volume tuned through the stations for the radio. You can mute the radio. You can also turn the screen off in case it's just distracting you. And you can always turn it on just by tapping the screen. Four-way flashers are here. Sport mode is located here as well. And your traction control off. Default will be on. Uh, but if you want to turn this traction control off, it's spin tires. It is a rear-wheel drive vehicle, so you can do donuts if you want to do it. Okay, so down here, or if you're just stuck, you know, a lot of people turn it off if you're stuck and you need to spin tires to get loose or something. Okay, so your fan speed, these are your redundant buttons for your climate control. Fan speed, um, you can put it on automatic, and then your temperature for your driver and passenger, your defrosters, and your air conditioning, and recirculate the air is all in this area. Just a quick way of, of making quick adjustments without having to go into the, you know, changing your screen all the time. Okay, so down here, this little door opens up and it's felt lined and there's a little place to put your phone or something here on the left side it goes in there quite a ways and then there's a 12 volt power supply that turns on and off of the ignition that's why it has a key okay so here's your shifter so this is a dial shifter so you simply put your foot on the brake and you can change the gear that you want so right now it's in reverse backup camera pops up right here when you put it in reverse and it has active guidelines so as I turn the steering wheel it's going to move the little lines right there giving us an estimated trajectory of the vehicle backing up it's a, the camera is slightly off to one side but not too much but you can still see from the bumper to the sky and all around giving you a good uh, a good view behind the vehicle all right there's neutral and then there's drive that's your normal drive position now you can use the paddle shifter simply by just pushing the paddle shifter. Okay, so if you're in drive driving around and you push the paddle shifter, you're gonna start changing the gears. But if you accidentally do that, you just push and hold the plus and it'll oh, just go right back into drive. You know, it's not a big deal. It does have eight gear ratio, so changing to the next gear is not a big deal if you accidentally do it. Um, but if you wanna do like a, if you want to be sporty and you want to change to the gears or just have the vehicle just more sporty feel when you're driving uh, you just push this down and push it to the right and it'll go into sport mode so this will uh, basically emphasize more performance over fuel economy so it's going to give you a higher revving uh, engine higher shift points and I think it maxes out as far as your highest gear around sixth gear so it keeps you at that the engine closer to the power band of the engine uh, using the shifts of the transmission and all that. Okay, there's a little storage pocket right in here. And it's not very deep, but it is deep enough to where you can set your cell phone in there and kind of prop it up if you want. And this actually is removable, so if you get a good grip back here, you can lift it up and this comes out and you can empty it. It also reveals a little pool 
tab, little pull, you see that like red thing in there? You just grab that little strap and pull up on it and it will put the vehicle in neutral uh, just in case, you know, the battery's dead and you need to, the, the rotary shifter is not, act, not working, you can actually manually put the transmission in neutral uh, using that little pull tab there. Okay, so here is a little cover for your, I think that's pretty cool too, and it's kind of rubberized. So this surface, you can put your cell phone right here or whatever, and it's not going to slide around on you. It's kind of rubber surface. It's grippy. Um, you can use it that way, or you can use it with the cup holders, illuminated cup holders. And you notice this little open spot here for putting something here, maybe business cards or whatever. Or you can has this open spot this way, so you can utilize the space for more than just cups. And it has these little springy portions right here to take up the slack on different size cups. The illuminated cup holders are pretty cool. When you put like a bottle of water or something in there at night and it illuminates the whole bottle of water, it's pretty neat. Okay, so here's your armrest. Soft to the touch, really soft. And it's like a, probably a vinyl or some kind of synthetic leather stitching here on the ends. Big enough to share with your passenger, I think. Let's go ahead and lift it up. Okay, so it has this storage compartment with this little removable tray. And it's all felt lined. And right here is where you'll find your auxiliary and USB inputs for your radio. It also has a 12 volt power supply that's directly connected to the battery. So you don't have to have the ignition on to use it. And there's a little rubber liner here at the bottom that you can take out. Let's go ahead and take that out. So we can take this out, we can clean it, um, we can, you know, dump it. So if we have change settling in the bottom, we can take this out. We don't have to dig it out manually. But I thought that was pretty cool having this little liner in there. And the little tray makes keeping everything organized a little bit better. Also, when you close the lid, so right in here, this little area, this little space right in here, I don't know if you can see that. When you close the lid, there's a space for the wires to go in and out. So literally, there's this wide open space there. So if you want to plug in your cell phone and have the wire run through here and then set the cell phone here if you want, uh, you could do that. It's not going to pinch the wire or anything. As long as you're aware of that little spot, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, here's the rear view mirror and it's auto dimming rear view mirror and it's auto dimming right now because I have the shade over this light sensor back here. Light sensor is right in this area. And you can, uh, of course, we could turn that feature on and off on the screen. I showed you that before. So you have your roadside assistance and emergency buttons here. So you can connect to the roadside assistance roadside assistance operator if you want and place to put your shades and it has this foam material here on the inside tap lights you have a flood light and then you have a more spotlight right here on both sides home link garage door opener controls are here as well and right in here at nighttime I don't know if you can see that yeah I turn the headlights on a little ambi ambient light shines right here and actually gives you some ambient just a tiny little bit of light right in here and, and it really helps out with getting your bearings inside the vehicle at nighttime and hopefully you can check out my night video I do have a Chrysler 300 at night video so you can check that out all right so the visor has mirrors and lights in it a little extended extender here on the on the side as well same thing on the other side Okay, so let's look at the uh, the visibility in the back. All right, so so you notice the headrests don't pop up too much, so don't really obstruct the the windows that much. But it does have pretty pretty big pillars there in the very back, and uh, but just kind of looking over your shoulders and everything in the rearview mirror, not too bad. Not as bad as a Challenger. A Challenger has a significant blind spot, which has pretty much been around since the 70s that same blind spot because of the style of the vehicle but this is not too shabby especially considering you have the backup camera and all that all right okay before we go 
I'm going to show you the window sticker. Now you can use the pause button to read all the details if you want. So it starts off with standard equipment for the S and then moves down to interior. And then you get to your exterior features and then your optional equipment. So this one has the, uh, the optional performance tires. Now this one has a rating of 30 on the highway. Uh, it could be because of the sport mode. Uh, some of the Chrysler 300s have a, with the V6, have a 31 rating from what, from what my memory. Pretty sure it had a 31 on there. So I guess it's because of the sport mode. If you use that at all, it's going to, you know, reduce your fuel economy. So that factors into the average. All right. 2018 Chrysler 300S at Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Thank you for watching and thank you to Van Underwood for allowing me to show off another vehicle and I'll see you guys next time.